Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ellison Cruz, and at long last, I'd like to welcome you to the finale of Bloodborne. Last time on the game, we fought our way through the fishing hamlet. We went and grabbed some pretty cool gear, and off screen, I went ahead and recorded the bonus episode, which means it's now time for us to go on a, another boss killing berserker raging bit of business. Hello, we can go up here? <laughs> Actually, hold on, this is new. I did not know about this clearly. I'm curious. Oh, no, we definitely can. <laughs> well, um, there is not a lot left for us to do out in the world, let alone the fishing hamlet. Oh, that was interesting. Is that somewhere I can go or look out from? That's interesting. I'm seeing more and more things that apparently I missed <laughs> the last time I played this. Uh, and we won't worry about it too much. It's probably not very important. The way to the boss is over here, and you can see all of these snail women absolutely enthralled by the next coming of whatever devious creature lies outside. So without further ado, let's fight off the Orphan of Cause. friends is likely a top contender for one of the most disturbing and unsettling things that we've seen in this game thus far. The poor deceased corpse of a shell of a great reborn giving birth to this poor child who sees the world in the state that it's in and can't help but openly weep. As we approach its sadness turns into anger, into rage, from melancholy, into disgust. This is the Orphan of Cause. He's annoying as hell. Oh my god. He's strong, but luckily, we can parry him in both of his phases. But he will be so aggressive in the second one. Good luck getting anything off there, friendo. I would very much recommend... Oh my god. Something fast. <laughs> and not the HMS. This is this is not a very optimal strategy, if I can be completely honest with you. Ooh! God! Sir. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people are not a fan of this fight, and I completely understand why. He is... <laughs> he's rough. Uh, especially his second phase. Thank you, finally. Clean shot. All right, let's get one more hitting. Not get too greedy. Oh, come on. <laughs> I rolled right in that. Okay, come here, sir. I'm pretty sure you can parry that, but it usually hits you anyways. Come on, come on in. Claim your prize, sir. You're the, oh my God throw that shit at me now. Yeah, you should be hitting phase two here soon. I just need to not be so docile. I'm afraid. I just want to get the viscerals, you know? Oof. The auger would be good, too, in getting those back shots, but... Any day now. Should be getting it. There. Oh, shit. Ouch. Here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my Jesus, man. Oh, 
this fight is too much. All I need are viscerals, man. Fuck. <laughs> He's scary! Shit! Okay, here we go. Stop it! Damn it! Fuck, I can't see anything! I, I don't even know what this guy is doing anymore. Give me one visceral. Give me one more. Come on. Damn it. Oh, shit. Okay. Visceral's probably not happening anymore. So. Oh, my God. That was... Wait a minute. We did it? <laughs> we defeated... The Orphan of Cause. And he drops the Parasite, which is great for us because, well, let's be honest here. We needed to collect every single one of the weapons that the old Hunter's DLC had, and we have them all. So I'm going to put that away. We'll go and bring this bad boy out. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, where the hell is it? It's just my bare, my bare fucking hands. What is, what's happening here? It's because we need another component to make it work. Don't forget to defeat the spirit so that the nightmare can be slain once and for all. Ah, sweet child of Kos, returned to the ocean. A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. So we get even more insight for that, and yeah, if any Lord Chads want to chime in on what this situation is about, then feel free to. I'm sure there's probably some document out there that will perfectly accentuate what this story is trying to tell but there is one more thing we need to do before finishing off the game and let's go and light this up and it's actually at the beginning of the fishing hamlet believe it or not now unfortunately at this point the doll here would have some additional dialogue if this place wasn't burning down to the ground upon defeating the orphan of cause so Keep that in mind that if you wanted to listen to that, then you would have to defeat the orphan before defeating the wet nurse. Uh, as far as other things are concerned, I think I'm going to slip into something a little more comfortable. Namely, the milkweed rune. It hosts phantasms as a lumen wood, and this is where the true potential of the parasite cause weapon comes into play. So, clearly you get some pretty interesting moves here. It's, uh... A little odd. I read this is actually the worst weapon in the entire game, weirdly enough. Here's the transformed version, which wouldn't be available to you unless you had this rune. But, I don't know, I think it could probably be worse. Ooh, that's cool. It's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. Now that we've become Broccoli Face, there's one last thing we need to do in the fishing hamlet. I said fishing hamlet, not lighthouse hut. This goddamn D-pad is going to be the death of me. Can I say that much? Oh, my fingers transformed into something different. Anyways, while wearing the milkweed rune, you can approach this very precautious appearing Curse character. Him. Curse that. Curse for he and she. Why care? A bottomless curse. A bottomless sea. Source of all greatness. All things that be. Listen for the baneful chance. Weep with them as one in trance. 
Thank you for that. I think the accursed brew is ours, and should you decide to use it, I don't know if I'm capable enough, if I have enough powers to do so. Yeah, I can't even use the Madaris whistle. I need blood for that. All right, throw a concoction of curses at foes. Hello? Are you okay? Do I need to test it out on you? Also, can we go over here? I don't think so. I'm fairly certain you cannot, but judging how great I did you know, when we went through here, um, I wouldn't put it past myself to have missed it. So I haven't shown all of the moves that we can use here, but just go and frag out, and it's kind of cool, but blah! <laughs> that's all. That's everything I wanted to show. Now, let's go back to the hunter's dream and make some last minute preparations. Ladies and gentlemen, you're presented with a choice. Anything else in the world you need to accomplish, such as finding hidden items, fighting secret bosses, or exploring optional areas like Kanehurst and the Upper Cathedral Ward, make sure to do so now. Because the moment that you confront Germin at the base of the Great Tree, the game will end and you will be thrust into New Game Plus. With all of your items, weapons, skills, all of your blood echoes, and all of the Holy Chalice dungeons you've created, you will be able to start your story anew, but things like the Hunter's Nightmare, that'll all be reset, and you'll basically be starting the game with a bunch of tougher enemies. So there's definitely some worth in that, but keep in mind, there are three very distinct endings that one can choose depending on, well, not only your decision that you make speaking to Germin, but also depending on if you've consumed any of the umbilical cords. You only need three of them to get to the best ending, but your choices mostly lie in how you opt into answering his question at the base of the tree. As you recall, we picked one up off of the corpse of Murgo's wet nurse. This is the only one that the game will force you to collect. At this point, you should have also hopefully found the abandoned workshop, at which point you would find another third of the umbilical cord. After defeating Rom, the vacuous spider, had you returned to Yosefka's clinic, you would find the imposter keeled over in pain, likely violated by a great one. Killing her will get you another third, but only if you didn't confront her before that. The fourth and final one is found from Ariana, the woman of the night. Upon killing the grotesque child that she had birthed, her devote attachment to this strange creature causes her to lose her shoes, but also grants us the last third of an umbilical cord. You only need three of them, and you need to make sure to consume them, but that is what triggers the true ending. But first, we're gonna take a look at some alternative endings, shall we? Good hunter, you've done well. The night is near its end. Now, I will show you mercy. You will die, forget the dream, and awake under the morning sun. You will be freed from this terrible hunter's dream. The choice is simple. Submit your life and you'll get what many consider to be the worst ending. Farewell, my keen hunter. Fear the blood.
Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. And on that note, we live to see another Yarnum sunrise. Granted, we did not accomplish what we had initially set off to do, which was transcending the hunt. But in my opinion, waking up from this nightmare is a far better fate than what happens had you decided to refuse Garman's offer. Electing to refuse Garman's offer will unsurprisingly yield a completely different result. Good hunter, you've done well. The night is near its end. Now, I will show you mercy. You will die, forget the dream, and awake under the morning sun. You will be freed from this terrible hunter's dream. It's time to battle with the first hunter himself. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, what was it? The hunt, the blood, or the horrible dream? Oh, it doesn't matter. It always comes down to the hunter's helper to clean up after these sorts of messes. Tonight, Garmin joins the hunt. That's right, Garmin, the first hunter. Here to make sure that there will always be hunters to fight against the beasts of Yarnum. He is fortunately very parryable in both of his phases, but you do want to make sure you are... Huh? Wait, why did they... That's really weird. I don't know why that popped up there, but... Let's, uh, hope that we can get in there with some arcane moves and not get sidewinded by his scythe. The burial blade is actually a really cool weapon, and defeating him allows you to purchase it for later. But... Ooh, we're not doing too bad here, actually. He's gonna bust off, and there's another one. That's good. After all, he is but a hunter. Just get in there, fast, strong. And now he's in his last phase, which it seems like he might not get staggered as easily. But you know what? That's fine. Because <laughs> all we have to do is finish him off. That is if he'd let us get one last little lick in on him. Oh no. And so, the hunt begins again. This, my friends, is what I'd consider to be the worst ending. Forever cursed to live in the dream created by Germin, 
only to shepherd hunters into killing the beasts of the night for the rest of time. I would much rather wake up from a nightmare than have to live through it, as invincible as I might be. Especially since the last one tried to burn it down to the ground. But you'll notice that nothing really came of that mysterious creature who enveloped us. That's because we didn't consume enough umbilical cords, which means... Tonight, Gammon joins the hunt. Are you cold? <laughs> oh, good hunter. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude our time here in Bloodborne. My name is Allison Cruz. Thank you all so much for joining me on this hell of an adventure. Had you told me at the beginning of 2024 that this would be among one of my favorite projects I've done to date on the channel, 
I might look at you kind of funny and then probably agree because this game is special. It has the V-Bays, the aesthetics, the gameplay, and I'm sure to some extent had it been presented more effectively, the story. Once you do enough digging, you can probably find a nugget of enjoyment out of that too because it's fairly interesting. I just wish there were more cutscenes to help flesh it out instead of needing to refer to online sources, but that will do it for us here in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I was thinking somebody had suggested Lies of P after this and I had heard some really good things about it, but Apparently it's a carbon copy of this game, and I think if I was to segue into anything remotely similar to Bloodborne, I would probably just do Sekiro, but we'll see. Oh, and this outro music, man. Well, I'm not going to torture you by sitting through the credits, so... Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. Whatever happens, you may think it all a mere bad dream. <laughs> we are back where it all began, Yosefka's Clinic, or however the hell you want to pronounce it. Everything that was in your possession, aside from the umbilical cords, will be still with you. And I think for all intents and purposes, we're done here. I did actually take a lot of consideration into potentially just doing a New Game Plus run and just blazing right through it, but... I think considering how fast I ended up recording this, I just don't want to get too burnt out on it and, you know, go out on a high note. Over here we've got our old friend the Scourge Beast. How dare you. And we didn't get our blood veils all filled up from that fight, which is fine. Hell of a boss fight though. I mean, it was kind of a pushover, the moon presence, but didn't have any trouble. Welcome to the great outdoors. Oh, the dark secrets harbored by Yosefka. We were so naive, we had no idea what was in store for us. But again, we open the gates back to central Yarna. Enemies, of course, will be a bit more difficult, and for every time you complete the game, Enemies will continually get stronger and stronger on a sliding scale. This, I think, continues until New Game Plus 7? So, after you beat the game 8 times, the game will stall on difficulty and enemies won't get any stronger, including bosses. But you could always just keep running on through and uh, collecting stuff. I'm not sure what would compel you to spend that much time in this game. It's good. But maybe not beat it over and over and over and over until you go crazy good, you know. Maybe in the remake. We'll see. As if there will be a remake at this point. But you know what? That's fine, because this game is as good as it gets. For the last time, let's return to the Hunter's Dream. Welcome back to where it all began and where it all will end. All of our chalices are still active and until we get another piece of insight then I'm sure the doll won't really have much for us here so we can always grab uh, another Pokemon. And these ones look a little different actually. We have some triangle gem slots which is kind of interesting. Huh, that's cool. I wonder why that is. Doesn't really matter since I'm not going to use it, but 
We'll go ahead and take the cane and of course, the pistol. Just because that's what we did not use last time, but everything here is still available to us. You can go grab some stuff from your crate and re-up on that. You can also say fuck you to Gehrman. <laughs> Uh, but all of your tools are still active. You don't have to seek those out. They've been replaced with, I think, Madman's Knowledge, maybe? So overall, not really bad at all. It's the purest form of New Game Plus. Everything is carried over in glorious fashion. And now, there is one last bit of business I want to attend to with our messenger friends. It's been a long time coming, but the Hunter Chief Emblem is now ours. I know you've been <laughs> bothered about that, my friends, but had you decided to use the Bold Hunter's Mark during the fight against the Moon Presence, you would be able to go out and still explore the world, but also purchase the Burial Blade, which was the trick weapon wielded by Garmin. We'll buy it, and if you have purchased every other weapon in the game, you'll get the Hunter's Essence Trophy. But for us, we get the Platinum. And that's it. There is nothing else left for us to do here, except the next episode, which is doing the final Thumerian Isle Chalice. Which, like I mentioned at the top of the finale, I had already done, and... It was a hell of a time, to be completely honest with you, but that will just about do it for us here in Bloodborne. Once again, thank you all so much for joining me. One day in the future, we'll do something similar to this, but stay tuned for other projects on the channel, and I hope you get as much enjoyment out of those that you might have gotten from this. I truly appreciate it. Love you guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.